Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Bryant alongside head coach Mike Norvell. We talk signees today as everyone will. This program brought to you by Nissan here on the Memphis Tiger Network. And coach, I know always an exciting, uh, yet probably kind of an, an anxious day for everyone on signing day because uh, once these guys kind of talk to you, we're coming, kind of see what happens on signing day. Yeah, you know, it's been a unique, unique year. You know, we had 14 guys that uh, that signed early this year. So, uh, you really, the number of guys here, uh, you know, in February is not as large as, it, as it's normally been. And uh, But, you know, it's still a day that symbolizes a beginning, you know, a, a new beginning. And a uh, beginning for these for these young men that are coming to join our program. I thought it was an exceptional group. We were really able to address a lot of uh, needs that we had within our football team. Uh, you know, we had a big focus of wanting to, to get larger um, among the offensive linemen right. and defensive front, and then we also wanted to, you know, create some more explosive explosiveness out there on the perimeter. And I think we we're able to, to do that in this early class. You're in on recruits more than just last fall, but last fall had to be a fun time to talk to the recruits. When once you guys got onto a roll, you really had a national presence. Oh, it's it's great. You know, finishing up the season 23rd in the country. Uh, you know, you know, being on national TV as much as we were, and then you know the way that we played. Uh, it's an exciting brand of football, and uh, you know every high school we went into, you know the the, the quality of the recruits that we've been able to attract has is, is been pretty remarkable to see. And, uh, you know, there's a there's a real uh, buzz around Memphis Tiger football. It's got to be fun to go either to a school or to a home, and they see that Tiger logo, and they know now – that is, that's the Memphis Tiger logo. The Tigers are here to watch me. Yeah, and you know, it's something that you know, you, you know, kids, they're they're funny. They they watch they watch their friends. They get to see, you know, they really track, uh, you know, you know, the history and past classes and how guys have gone in and been able to achieve success. Uh, we've been able to play 35 freshmen in our first two years here, and uh, you know, we've had the best signing classes in school history, and we feel like we've been able to add to to that group here in, in this year's class. Uh, we didn't have as big of a number, so you know, I knew right. the ranking wouldn't be, you know, that was going to be something that uh, uh, would probably uh, you know, you know, uh, jump off like in past years. But the quality of the young men that we've been able to attract to our program is, is at an all-time high. And really last year's team going into recruiting as far as what you show these guys is that anyone can, can maximize their potential at Memphis, whether you're a blue chipper or whether you're someone like Anthony who came in and walk on and really what what he did to make himself uh, an All-American. Yeah, and I mean we we tell kids all the time this is a this is a program that's built for playmakers, and you know that's our job. That's what we want to be able to market these guys to showcase them in a unique way. Uh, you look at a young man like T.J. Carter who yeah. had who had offers from all over the country, but you know, he looked he truly looked for the right fit for himself, and you know to come in as a freshman and you know play at the level which he played. Uh, you know it's a nobody's asking who he is or or the decision of why he came to Memphis right. Right now, because you know, after following up an All-American campaign, you know, you know, he definitely put himself in the right position. All right, Coach, let's talk about a few of these guys. Let's, let's hit some specifics here for some players that are already enrolled in school. Let's start off with Keith Brown, junior out of Madison, Mississippi. Uh, Keith's a young man we're extremely excited about. You know, graduating Jannard, uh, you know, that was a, a very dynamic player that we had. Uh, you know, we, you know, Jannard was able to do so many different things, and Keith really brings a lot of that similar, uh, you know, mentality and mm -hmm. traits. Uh, you know, he is he played defensive line his entire career up until last season and so you know he's a guy that's used to being on the edge you know being able to attack a great pass rusher but then last year he moved back to the inside linebacker spot and was a first team all-conference player from northwest mississippi and then also was uh, led their team in tackles so he's a guy that can play sideline to sideline but definitely has a great physical presence Tell me a little bit about Antonio Gibson now. He's going to be a wide receiver. He's originally out of Stockbridge, Georgia. He went to East Central Community College. Well, you know, Antonio is a guy, you know, graduating at, you know, Anthony Miller. You know, you see, uh, you know, Phil Mayhew, guys that have, that are, you know, obviously have had great success throughout their career as, as Tigers. We wanted to bring another experienced uh, receiving threat, and Antonio is is another unique, uh, you know, unique athlete. He's he's a bigger body, 6'2", uh, you know, probably weighs about 225 pounds, I think, is what we weighed him in yeah. at this morning, And but he can run. He can run, change direction has played running back, has been in the slot. We think that he is a dynamic uh, a, a weapon and you know, one that uh, we already had a month with him, and our guys are raving about the explosiveness that he has. So uh, we're definitely glad to have him on campus. Coach, to wrap up, the players that are already enrolled, I know someone that you're really familiar with will be Brady White, the transfer from Arizona State. and. Number one, the thing that stands out to me, graduated in three years. No, uh, yeah, Brady's Brady's an exceptional young man. Yeah. You know, I was I was fortunate to be able to recruit him uh, at, at Arizona State. You know, he's a number two quarterback in the country uh, coming out in high school. You know, he was a uh, uh, you know, he played early. He started one game, and unfortunately, in that one game, uh, even though it was a win against UCLA, he got hurt in the fourth quarter, yeah. and uh, so he has actually missed the next year and a half uh, due to an injury. But you know, he's back full speed. You know, we're we're excited to bring him into our program, and you know, like like I told. Uh, 
told everybody the first day I got here, if there's going to be one position <laughs> we're going to have, uh, uh, you know, obviously competition at, it's going to be that quarterback spot. And so we think Brady really brings uh, you know, another uh, you know, great option there in that room. Well, that's the, the third straight one now because you, you started out, you had Paxson a few years ago, then Roddy the last two seasons. It's really a place now those those – Really top grade quarterbacks are going to be attracted to. Well, I mean, this we, we, like I said, this is an offense that's built for playmakers, yeah. and uh, you know, whenever you're able to surround guys, uh, you know, that spot with the guys that we have there on the perimeter and in the backfield, we, you know, it's very attractive for uh, for for the quarterback spot, and uh, you know, and then that also continues to, to it's a compliment to the guys that we also have on on campus. You know, David Moore, uh, Connor Adair, uh, you know, Brady. Uh, you know, Brady Davis, mm -hmm. and then Brady McBride, who's somebody else that signed here in this class. So we got a great group, and uh, we're excited about that competition. Now, Coach, let's take a look at your early December signees. They've been announced, but let's kind of touch on these guys. But first of all, on these early signees, what's the goal uh, of this group coming in? You know, the, the biggest focus for us was you know continue to emphasize the size and athleticism up, up front. I mean, that was a it was a big key. You'll know, be able to get the two early signees on the offensive line, and then two get the, the two big signees on the defensive front. That that allows us a lot of flexibility coming in. To mm -hmm. signing day, um, you know, I, I, we also wanted to add some explosiveness on the perimeter. We were able to get you know three dynamic players there on the on the edge that we think can line up in the slot in the backfield, you know, even at, outside at receiver. And then you know uh, you know big safety there in Quindell Johnson, uh, and then you know, also big Jeremy Tate out at, at, at wide out. So we were address we were able to address a lot of different needs that we had, and uh, you know I think we were able to to really become a bigger and faster team. Fans have seen the story. They've read the release. They know the names kind of. But let's get your thoughts on these players. Let's run through them. Let's start off with Keith Brigham, a defensive lineman out of Normal, Illinois, and actually coming from Pima Community College. Yeah, you know, Keith was a guy that uh, you know we, we pinpointed there uh, pretty early in the process, and you know was he was actually overlooked by by a couple different different schools. Uh, you know there early in the process, um, but you know we thought he was a great fit. He's 6'3", 265 pounds, can hmm. play defensive end, a guy that we think can come in and really compete to replace what. Chris Christian Johnson has been for us. Um, you know, he's explosive, physical, uh, can run all over the field, and you know, definitely going to be a dynamic player. Another guy on the defensive side, a defensive end, is Chris Clark, 255 pounds. He's 6'3", out of Sardis, Mississippi, with the North Panola. Yeah, you know, Chris was a, was a young man that really jumped out at our mega camp that we had this summer, and you know, Chris uh, was was by far the most expl uh, explosive defensive defensive lineman, and I think he tried to take every single rep that he could. <laughs> um, you know, was a dynamic and as a pass rusher. Sure, you know, being there from North Panola, that's that's really local for us, and uh, you know we're we're excited to bring a guy with his size and skill set. Uh, you know, Chris has weighed as much as 270 pounds. Now he's down to around 250, so we think he's going to be able to play that defensive end spot for us. Uh, but you never know; he might be, even be able to, to grow into a guy that can move down in the interior as well. Coach, let's go to the offensive line here: 6'5", 285, out of Sharpsburg, Georgia. Evan Fields. He was in the Georgia Junior Bowl game. And also interesting, he was a uh, high school wrestler, and I've been around some high school programs. They like their offensive players or offensive linemen if they can get into a wrestling program just because of the athleticism. Yeah, I, I love his athleticism, love his size, and love the, he, you know, how nasty he plays the game. You know, he's a big athlete. He's a guy that can can pull and get up on the on the second level. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's he's he is definitely going to be a, a young man that we think is going to have a bright future. We'll have an opportunity to play early just because of his, his, his high intelligence. Uh, yeah, and like you said, you know, the athleticism that he, that he displays out there on the field. Coach, a running back, 5'9", 175 pounds. Cameron Fleming out of Cedar Hill, Texas. Cedar Hill High School averaged nine yards a carry in high school. Yeah, you know, those, those explosive players you know, that we've kind of accustomed to here in Memphis, you know, we think Cam fits right in the bill with that. Uh, you know, Cam, his junior year, set a national record for kickoff returns for a touchdown. You know, he's, a, uh, he's definitely a, a dynamic player from Cedar Hill High School, you know, one of the top high school programs in the state of Texas. Uh, you know, really can do it all. Can line up in the backfield, can play in the slot, and then, like we talked about, is, is the thing, the, uh, the the gifts that he brings to our special teams will will, will be fun to watch. Got a unique player out of Yazoo, Mississippi, and Kenneth Gainwell, 5'11", 185. He was a three-year starter at quarterback, but I think you guys kind of see him as a guy you can plug in a lot of positions yeah. to be explosive. You know, Kenny is, Kenny is probably, you know, one of the most dynamic athletes that I've ever recruited. Uh, you know, he can play running back, slot receiver. You know, he was a 3A state player of the year uh, in Mississippi. So he is a, he was a, a you know, a special talent, uh, you know, went and played in the uh, the Miss Owl game and was actually the offensive MVP of that wow. game uh, coming in. But we think we got a, we got a special steal there with, uh, with Mr. Gainwell. We move along to a state champion and a state champion MVP, Troy Hurst. He was a running back wide receiver, stands 6'2", 185 pounds. 
Comes out of Greensburg, Louisiana. Uh, yeah, Troy is a, another one of those special athletes. You know, I think he started he started five or six positions in his time there. Uh, you know, at Saint, Saint uh, Helena, and I mean, he is a he is definitely a, a unique talent. You know, he's six foot two. Uh, you know, he can play in the backfield. He can play at receiver. Great ball skills. Um, you know, is he's got a you know the, the right mentality of, from from a physical nature. Uh, you know, if if he ever finds himself over on the defensive <laughs> side, but uh, you know, he's a, he's a young man that's going to bring a world of talent to our program, and we're definitely excited to have. Quendell Johnson, 6'1", 185 pounds, played in the defensive backfield, mainly as a safety out of New Orleans, Louisiana. His team back-to-back -back state championships. Yeah, and, he, and he was a quarterback of that secondary. And, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, Quendell is an is a extremely intelligent young man. Uh, you know, can make plays sideline to sideline, and when he puts his pads on you, you know, you pretty much stop. So a uh, great tackler coming from the, from the, uh, uh, from the second level, and uh, we think we got a, a great player that's going to come in and be able to help, also help our, help our uh, program here early. We stay in Louisiana, in New Orleans to be specific, 6'3", 275-pound offensive lineman, Titus Johnson. Uh, Titus Jones is a yeah. great player. You know, he's a he's six three. You know, he's already grown. To, uh, you know, he's at two hundred seventy five <laughs> pounds. And, you know, he's probably pushing past that right now. But uh, you, one of the best athletes I've I've seen up on a, on an offensive line at the high school ranks. You know, very technical. Uh, you know, he had multiple Power Five offers when he committed here early last spring and uh, was able to stay true through it. You know, battled a, battled an injury there a senior year, uh, which was uh, you know which was kind of held out of. But he's already he's already back to a hundred percent, and uh, you he'll be a young man that can come in and compete at a, very, at a very early age. Always interesting when you get those high school teammates, like he was uh, Quindell Johnson's uh, teammate, so you put uh, Johnson and Jones together. They're used to working together. No question, especially when you're talking about state champions. Right. And uh, you know, th those guys know what it takes to win, and uh, you know they're, they're excited about being Memphis Tigers. Kind of, kind of an athlete out of Jackson, Tennessee, Alec Long. Oh, Alec is a, uh, is a great player. We think that uh, you know, he, was, he was a guy that uh, you know, this past year uh, you know, had to actually sit out, kind of like what Daryl Henderson did, right. uh, you know, making sure that he finished up. You know, there are a couple things academically, but uh, you know, now to be able to add him into our program, uh, you know he's a versatile athlete. Was a, was a, you know a part of a, a state champion uh, you know team there uh, at, at Liberty Tech. Uh, you know they got to the state finals for the very first time in their school history. Uh, you know he was an all state all state performer. You know an, an all star in every capacity. You know great defensive back. We think he can play safety. We think he could you know possibly bulk up to even be one of those outside linebackers. Uh, but you know he's all he was a guy in high school that returned punts. And to see that kind of versatility, he's a he's a special uh, special athlete. Let's move along. Brady McBride. That six foot, one hundred ninety five pound quarterback out of Cobble, Texas. Well, you know Brady is a, a special, a special talent as well. You know he's a he's a three year starter. You know I've been watching him. I've been watching him throughout his throughout his career. He's a he's a. Uh, uh, the son of a coach, and uh, you know, so he is an extremely intelligent, uh, great manager of the game. You know, he's a, you know a very elusive guy coming out of the, out of the uh, out of the backfield when things break down. But you know, he's thrown for over seven thousand yards in his career, and uh, you know, we think you know he's a two-time district MVP there in his conference in his district there in Texas. He plays at the highest classification, and you know, he's definitely a winner. We're excited about him. And a combo you might see in the future, some guy he might enjoy throwing to is our final uh, guy in this group, Jeremy Tate, 6'4", 210-pound, Wide receiver out of Columbus, Mississippi. Yeah, you know, Jeremy was a, is a huge target, and you know, he's got he's got an unbelievable wingspan. You know, he's a very very polished route runner for a, for a young guy coming in. We think that's gonna gonna really be an asset for him. And then you combine the, the mm -hmm. route running ability with the you know uh, obviously obviously with the size that he has. You know, he's gonna be he's gonna be a weapon, and uh, you know definitely a, a, we're hoping a, a, a handful for any defensive back lining up on the off, opposite side. Yeah, the best thing about this this early group uh, that had already signed, and, and we kind of. Knew about is uh, those young men, those student athletes, they can enjoy that senior season. They've made their decision. They can have everything kind of set before they get on campus. Yeah, and you know one of one of the unique uh, things with that with that early signing class is we brought them on our official visit after signing day. Mm -hmm. So they were all here in January together. It was a great bonding experience. You know that we weren't going back and forth on who was going to sign or who not. But those guys really uh, you know had a, had a wonderful opportunity to start building those relationships. And uh, we think that's uh, you know, even though it's not the largest uh, group just because right. of the size of the class, uh, you know, we think the quality that we got in in that and that class was special. All right, Coach, now let's get into the, the really fun part of signing day. This is the one where everyone follows the Internet, and the, the papers, and the media. Are they out watching this guy, watching the, that guy? We're going to find out who is going to sign. So let's get into these guys. Let's start it off with Jalen Allen. He's out of uh, Humble, Texas. 
uh, an all-district linebacker, help us team to the state uh, semifinals. You know, Jalen is a young man from Atascacita, which we've had a great stretch with Patrick Taylor, you know, you Coy Fairman, uh, Trey Hamilton that are already from the same school. And, uh, you know, Jalen's a young man that, that really developed late in his career. And he played, he played a good amount there as a junior, but his senior year really burst onto the scenes. He's 6'2", uh, probably close to 220, 225 wow. pounds, a guy that is explosive coming off the edge, very versatile uh, linebacker prospect that we think is going to have a great career. Let's move to Montre Bonner. He's 6'3", 235, big defensive lineman out of Raleigh, North Carolina, went to Fullerton College. He's first team All American at Fullerton. Yeah, you know Montre is a special, special uh, uh, pass rusher. He is uh, in in two years at Fullerton broke their all time sack record. Had thirty sacks in two seasons. So you mentioned being a first team All American. Uh, we think that he's a guy that can come in and make an immediate impact. Uh, like I said, that was one of the things we wanted to address in recruiting is being able to impact the quarterback. And Montre was as good as anybody in, in the junior college ranks. Uh, you're there this past season, so we're glad to have him on board. You talked earlier about building depth on the on the line. You're going to have some seniors this year, but you got to look long term. You went to Isaac Ellis, 6'2", 310 pounds coming out of Carroll High School in Monroe, Louisiana. And I was a coach. It's, a, it's pretty fun to see the guy already tipping 300 coming in as a freshman. Oh, and Isaac is a, another one of those big athletes. He is, uh, he's 310 pounds, but he, he moves like he's 260. And uh, you, he, he has actually started on both sides of the line there at Carroll. Uh, you know, he, you know, don't be shocked if you don't look up and see him doing <laughs> a little bit of double duty you know, during yeah. his time here. But, you know, he's an extremely smart, uh, smart young man. You know, he had to fight off some guys late trying to come in and get him. But uh, we're, we're definitely glad that Isaac is a, is a part of our team. And he, he's a guy that can come in and probably can tribute early. Let's go back to the defensive side of linebacker here, a local kid out of Lausanne here in Memphis and Niall Love. Oh, Niall's an explosive player and, you know, I've loved I've loved watching the, you know, his progression throughout his career. You know, Niall's a, uh, you know, a great athlete that's lined up at tailback there at Lausanne mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, just brings a tremendous playmaking ability there. Uh, you know, all over the field. You know, is, you know, a guy that's made a ton of tackles throughout his, his time there. I think he had 10 takeaways, uh, you know, there, uh, you know, from the defensive side of the ball and, you know, like I said to be able to line up at on you know while playing linebacker and flip over and play running back right. uh, that's a definitely a special skill set coach an offensive lineman another big kid out of Glendale Community College in Arizona 295 pounds 63 Manuel Arona. Oh, big Manny. We're excited about him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Manny came the very first weekend in January. Uh, you know, I've had a relationship with him over the last few years. And, uh, you know, unbelievable progression. He's actually only played football for three years. And so we wow. feel like, much like Roger Joseph last year coming in, we think he has a huge upside, uh, you know, with his future. But Manny turned down, I think it was five or six Power Five offers after he committed to Memphis and stayed true, uh, uh, true to us, you know, throughout this process. And uh, that was definitely a a good, uh, a good commitment and, and even a better feeling when he signed. It's always interesting when you sign an athlete like that, regardless of the sport. They've not played it very long, but they've accelerated uh, their development. Number one, you should probably have a lot of fundamental stuff you're going to have to coach, but you don't have to coach out a lot of bad habits either. No, and I mean, and these are guys that, that love playing the game, mm -hmm. and you know he's excited about the opportunity here in Memphis. You know, he's he's been able to sit back and watch Dustin Woodard, who's also from Phoenix area, that and come in and start for the first two years. And you know, we do have a need. You know, graduating Gabe Coon, you know Leo Lafayette this last year. Um, you know, those guys we needed a little bit of depth and guys that can come in and play early. And we feel Manny's one of those uh, one of those you know special players. Him, Isaac, you know, you know, Titus, that really are going to provide a lot of uh, competition and depth along that offensive front. Another interesting story you just talked about: uh, Arona only playing for three years. Cam Wilson, six seven, two hundred thirty-two pound linebacker out of Hueytown, Alabama, did not start playing football till his junior year. He's going to be that guy at 6'7". He'll be able to see over that line. He's really going to be able to see what's going on in that offensive backfield. Yeah, you know, Cam was a basketball player coming up, and yeah. his junior year he went out and started started playing football, and he actually played wide receiver and tight end. And, you know, unlike most basketball players that, that come through just starting to play football, uh, you know, Cam came in with a, just an unbelievable, uh, you know, natural tack for contact and physicality, and that's what I loved. And, you know, being able to watch him, you know, he, he was a, you know, he's really good in space. You know, he's got a great sense of, of you know, being able to, to, to create separation and and you know like I said he has that physical mentality we think that Cam has an opportunity to to flip over to the defensive side of the yeah. ball and you'll know, be a great pass rusher be a guy that could be on that defensive front that uh, you know, can really uh, cause havoc especially especially with the length that he has. All right, coach, you mentioned earlier that's a look at at the signees. Uh, didn't have to sign a very big class this year, so the rankings night might pop off the paper at you as you mentioned, but. 
you seem pretty fired up about what you got signed. Oh, no question, because you know every young man that we that we brought into the program is the right fit for mm-hmm. us, and we feel like are going to be great contributors uh, to what we're doing. It's it's funny, you know, you look back over the last two years, we've had you know you know highly ranked highly ranked uh, teams, and you know in recruiting classes, and still sometimes uh, those guys that maybe didn't that weren't the uh, the the stars of the signing class ended up being you know really good players right out of the beginning. You know, Roger Joseph last year coming in, I think was only a st- two star guy, yeah. and you know now he's he's really established himself as one of our top offensive linemen. You look at Bryce Huff, uh, you know that's you know come in and, and played a, a huge amount. Uh, you know, in his first two seasons, done a great job. And so, you know, we're continuing to, to, to make sure that we're addressing the needs that we have, and uh, we've been able to do it with the right young men. And, of course, with this signing class, as every signing class is meant to be, to push the guys that are already here. I know coaches like to just go in and say, look, we signed you because we thought you were going to be projected to be better than what we had. Same thing with this class coming in. So the returners will have to step their game up. Well, no question. Like I said, anytime you can start 35 uh, or, or play 35 freshmen in, in two years, uh, we have a great talent base. Mm-hmm. And being able to add prospects like, we, like we've had today, uh, we know that number is going to continue to increase. And there's going to be a great competition, because not just for now, but for the future to come. Coach, sounds exciting. Uh, it was a pleasure and uh, have a lot of fun. Signing day, I know, is always a, a fun time for coaches. Thanks so much, and go Tigers. That is head coach Mike Norvell. I'm Jeff Brywell for our signing day show brought to you by Nissan on the Memphis Tiger Network.